the things. So to keep my word on that, the Daredevil video, which will probably be long because there's three seasons, will come out like next month probably. And I Hey guys, so obviously I've been gone for a little bit more than five months. A little after this video was released, I went into a deep depression with episodes of Mania snuggled in between. It was a pretty hard time for me. School was pretty much an afterthought. I wasn't even attending. <laughs> I was getting horrible grades. I legit, with no exaggeration, was going to become Heisenberg. Doing illegal things in Utah is a big no-no. I don't want the Mormons coming after me. So I had to think of something to get this thing off my chest. I even got a new mic now. Listen to this. In all seriousness, this is a very personal video for me, and I'll be covering mature and sensitive topics, so viewer discretion is advised. And yes, this is the same video you clicked on that had Ice King and Spider-Man in the thumbnail. Trust me, we're gonna get to them. Something that a lot of people that have never been addicted to substances or bad behaviors don't understand is why. Why ruin their life for a cheap higher thrill? And to be completely honest with you, it's cause it makes everything easier. Not better, but easier. Both of these characters show this stage perfectly. When Simon Petrikov is taking care of Marceline in her childhood, he was a father figure. In more than just making sure she was okay, in, you know, the apocalypse. He tried making her as happy as she could be really trying to have a bond with her. But he's only human. When push comes to shove, he has to become something else. The Ice King, bestowed with the power to destroy any threat they might face. But it distorts his mind, twisting and mangling it into something chaotic, out of control. He loses himself in it, but he decides to make that sacrifice for Marceline. Except, it's not actually helping them. I'll get into what that means later, now let's go to the other dude in the thumbnail. Most of you are probably thinking that, Blue, Spider-Man isn't that mentally unstable. He's never done any drugs before either. Are you stupid or something? I'm sorry guys, but there's like, no way this guy's alright in the head. Peter definitely has depression. Bro has had a pet slice of cheese named Kevin. That's how lonely this guy was. Do you know how much Peter jumps around between love interests? He dates his co-workers, his classmates, his enemies, and his uh, adopted sister. Yeah, we don't, we don't talk about Ultimate Peter and Gwen Stacy. He even dated a... Ugh, a cop! Also, he's been seeing people get gunned down and takes major damage to his entire body every day since he was 15 years old. So he's probably not doing the best, you know? And usually people are incredibly open to anything that would take away some of the workload. A lot of people don't know this, but originally, the black suit never made Peter evil in the comics. All it did was basically just improve his abilities, making his job easier and even fighting crime for him while he's asleep. The only reason he got rid of it was because he thought it was gross that it was alive. But we aren't going to talk about racist Spider-Man today. We're going to talk about the GOAT, the spectacular Spider-Man cartoon. Now this adaptation does basically exactly what I just explained, except Peter isn't racist, and the symbiote just takes away the one thing he believes in the most in his entire life. Not looking the other way. His whole life changed because he looked the other way and decided to do nothing because it didn't benefit him. Peter's mental state gets so twisted while being pumped on alien drugs that he decides to get paid by the godfather of New York City to look the other way when he cheeses. 
He's not a better hero with the suit. He just wants the life to be easier. Okay, let's go back to the autistic soft boy again. The reason why I said Simon wasn't actually helping himself and Marceline is because he forgot the thing Marceline needed the most, more than protection. Emotional support. Every time he put on the crown, his mental state would get worse and worse. He tried playing it off like it was fine, and Marceline would beg him to stop, but the fear of her getting hurt was too much for him. Simon knew it wasn't the right way. The first time he ever put on the crown, he lost the love of his life. There were even times where solutions other than the crown were available, but they were just too scary for him. Too much of a risk that he didn't want to take. And in the end, the damage became irreversible, with only the Ice King persona remaining. From my personal experience of being an autistic drug addict, I have to say recreational drugs are not for my brain. There's an increased risk of going into psychosis. And that's basically temporary schizophrenia. I could hear voices that weren't there. My perception of reality was basically non-existent. Even then, knowing that I still wanted to, to take drugs was not caring for myself because it made things easier for me. I didn't have to think about real issues or how I acted. I'd make excuses and say that it was fine and that it was helping me. And my biggest regrets in my life happened while I was in that state. I lost people I loved. It was my fault. Anywho, Spectacular Spider-Man shows this in a way of just Peter being the biggest asshole you've ever seen. Do my homework, maybe lower my GPA? Or, or borrow my camera, take some spidey pics, because I do need the money. I got some humongous hospital bills to pay. We're just trying to be your friends. Yeah, well, unless my friends are prepared to pony up some cash, they can keep their help and their sympathy. And what am I even doing here? For a lot of drugs, a lot of the after effects causes irritation for most people. Take nicotine, for example. I've seen a lot of smokers not be able to get up smoke and immediately become a jerk. Even for stoners or alcoholics, not being able to crack open another beer would enrage them. One of the main things focused on in most Spider-Man stories is that he's not alone. That the people in his life are what make him go. But the suit angers him, makes him push them away. He loses what makes him a hero, what makes him Spider-Man. When I was first in treatment, I didn't want to change. I wanted to give up on everything, to crumble into dust and blow away. I thought what I did under psychosis was irredeemable, that my life wasn't worth trying again. I would have episodes of mania. I'd beg people to end me. Nothing I could do would make up for it. When I was in psychosis before treatment, I had lied and had said some horrible things about some girls, even the first love of my life. I made disgusting comments about them. Today, it's the worst thing I've ever done. And for a long time, I was alone with no drugs. I had people to support me, to remind me of who I really was, of all the good I've done. The people I helped when they were struggling beside me in treatment. The people who had no one, but I was there for them. When there was a predator in my school, I put him in his place. When staff were abusing students, I was there to comfort them. I found a family, people I would die for. There's no such thing as people can't change. I've met people who were complete jerks but they made choices to change and better themselves. Allowing myself to go back to what destroyed me because I don't think I can fix myself doesn't help anyone. To all the people who helped and supported me in helping myself. To try again. 
I thank you so much, and I love you. Okay, so as you can imagine, there's a, still a lot of video left, and this is totally not me being lazy last minute and wanting to talk more about stuff, but I already recorded it, and I just want to talk about more, and we're going to start talking about media that's actually made for Instead going between both of them at the same time, I'm just going to do them individually. These are both short stories that are specifically just talking about drugs and mental illness. So it's much easier to connect the dots than with the, you know, Cartoon Network show. Okay, first up, we got Batman, Venom. Look at his face, dude. <laughs> this... This comic starts off with a bang with Batman failing to save a little girl from drowning. So, you know, what a great start we're at. This, understandably, makes Batman a bit depressed, and he goes to tell the father what happened. The father could not give less of his shit and immediately tries to sell Batman super steroids. He declines and says he's not interested because he's Batman. Then criminals bust in and try to kill the father. They're not successful and Batman chases after them. I really <laughs> like the writing here, talking about how Batman awkwardly lands on the getaway vehicle and hurts himself in progress. He can barely hold on to it and flies off when the car crashes into a post. It shows how human Bruce is. He isn't an alien with godlike abilities. He isn't the fastest man alive. He's just a man. He even starts thinking this himself. He starts pushing his abilities to the limit and fucking hurts the hell out of himself. The death of that girl is the only thing on his mind. If only he was stronger. If he was able to be better. He goes to beat the shit out of the murderers and gets fucking swamped by them and almost dies. Obviously, you see the pattern of the characters we're talking about, so he goes back to the dad and takes the pill. Usually, people go to drugs to help them at their lowest, and that's obviously what the writers are going for here. But I also think they're also trying to show that Bruce wants to forget his mistake. Later on in the story, he's taking these pills every day and is so dependent on them. When Alfred tells him to stop, he tells him to quit, which is insane if you know anything about Batman. He starts beating up people who haven't even committed a crime in years, doesn't do it as a, the symbol of hope that Batman is and just as some guy in a trench coat. Hell, Commissioner Gordon asks Batman to take out the guy in the trench coat. And then he starts grinning like this. Yeah, well, uh, he, he's finished. He's cooked. Anywho, the rest of the comic is pretty good, and I recommend reading it yourself. For now, we go on to our final analysis. This is when <laughs> things get serious. The House is a little stop-motion anthology series on Netflix. I'm only going to be talking about the second episode, but I recommend you watch the other two. They're pretty good, I'd say. So, there's this mouse dude, right? He's trying to sell this house that actually looks really nice on the outside, but in the inside there's like bug infestations and crack in the infrastructure. Obviously that's kind of a dick move and he's doing it just to get some good money. Thankfully no one buys the house from him but these freaking looking bug things say they're interested and ask if they can stay at the house for like a night. For a while they kind of just live at the house for free and don't show any intention of leaving. Dude calls the cops to get them out of there, but they confront him for spam calling his dentist romantically. S so they... F I, I, actually, I gotta say, off script, that, that's fucking weird. So, they refuse to help him with the bug broskies. So bro uses the infestation bug poison to kill the dudes but he accidentally overdoses on it, ending with the house being completely taken over. I think the house is representative of someone's mental state with everything looking great on the outside, but 
uh, inside it's completely breaking down. Him choosing to still try to sell it during that state shows how someone will still try to go about life normally, even though you're ignoring your own issues. Him using the poison to keep the bugs at bay is a metaphor for using recreational drug substances to help your mental health. The police not helping, I feel, is representative of how the law cares more about punishing the actions of mentally unstable people instead of actually stabilizing them. Uh, so yeah, I'm back. I'm gonna start trying to make videos more frequently, and if everything goes according to plan, there should be at least one more video coming out the same time this one does. It'll be a lot more lighthearted than this video, and trust me, it will. <laughs> Anywho, don't do drugs if you're a Pop-Tart. Okay, bye. <laughs>